Good afternoon and welcome to our series of webinars focused on bringing you information about COVID-19 related topics. The information in these weekly webinars is geared toward long-term care and skilled nursing facilities, but we encourage everyone who is interested to attend. My name is Kathy Caudill. I'm a communications specialist with Quality Insights. Today, we will be talking about successful strategies to improve staff influenza vaccination rates. Everyone will be on mute, but we will be having a Q&A at the end of this webinar. So if you have any questions or comments, please send them to us using either the chat or the Q&A tools, which you can find in your Zoom menu. We invite you to join us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for more webinars in this series. Next week, we will be talking about the SBAR communication technique and how it can be used in infection control. SBAR stands for Situation, Background, Assessment, and Recommendation. And I would also like to invite uh, everyone to the Quality Insights Nursing Home Team's live virtual event next Tuesday. That event is for long-term care workers in West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Our nursing home team will be there to talk about our program's new healthcare initiatives. You'll also get some face time with your region's quality improvement specialist. We're really excited for this kickoff event, which is on Tuesday, September 20th at 1 p.m. We really hope that you can join us. And I will drop a link in the chat shortly where you can register if you're interested. And with all that said, I would now like to introduce our guest today, Audrey Fernald. Audrey has been an infection and control preventionist at Fellowship Community in Whitehall, Pennsylvania for 10 years. And she is currently their Director of Infection Prevention and Occupational Medicine. Audrey will be presenting today on how Fellowship Community increased their staff influenza vaccination rates. She made this presentation for the Jewish Healthcare Foundation along with Deborah Wright, one of our quality improvement specialists here at Quality Insights. We're excited to have Audrey here to give us an advanced preview of that presentation. But first, Deborah Wright has a few words to say. So Deborah. Sure, thanks, Kathy. So we are very excited to have partnered with Audrey and the fellowship community with this uh, many years uh, ago, she'll explain, they um, took the stance that they were mandating their influenza vaccination rates for their staff as um, a requirement for employment. And they were able to maintain that for many years. So what, what they had to do then with when COVID came along is with COVID, we all know you had the ability for the exemption process. So what Audrey's going to talk about today is how they um, work together as a team and continued enforcing their influenza uh, mandate for their staff, but how they worked through that with the exemption process that um, was put into place with the COVID vaccine. So we're excited to have Audrey and I will turn it over to her. Thank you, Deborah. Well, Fellowship Community is uh, continuing care retirement community. Uh, we have 121 skilled beds, 163 personal care beds, and we also have 151 independent units on our campus, and that includes townhouses and apartments. Staffing-wise, um, as uh, probably everybody's staffing is a little bit low right now, uh, we have only 330 employees. We used to run around 360, but um, staffing is low right now. We have about 18 active volunteers and 55 contracted food service personnel. We also have dentists, hair care, uh, mental, mental health care, vision care um, coming into our facility. We have a full-time medical director and uh, pastoral care. So what happened was um, <clears throat> before I started working here, um, the facility, they had the 2004 flu outbreak and I guess apparently it was very bad here. And so they started thinking about mandating influenza because the rates of staff getting it, um, flu vaccinated was very low. So it took, it took quite a while until they, um, got all the kinks out of it and got, you know, the lawyers involved and all this other stuff. But finally in, in 2012, they were able to um, write their policies, get it approved. And we started um, 
mandating influenza vaccines for our staff and volunteers and all the contracted personnel. Um, and that started in August of 2012. And I started working here in October of 2012. So, you know, I, I kind of got right in at the beginning of it, um, which was which was good. And some of the ways that we we were able to do that is we really pushed out the education um, in every department, at every level. We did in services, posters, emails, um, just to get the information out on how important it was for this um, flu vaccine mandate. We were the first facility in this area to mandate the flu vaccine. Um, and a lot of people have followed our footsteps in doing this. Next slide. So initially there were some staff that were grandfathered in because they had a medical or a religious exemption. Right now, then it was only, we were down to only one person that had a medical exemption. Um, the pastors would really comb over the religious exemptions um, to make sure that they were appropriate. So they researched different doctrines and everything. And at that time, we really did not have any religious exemptions that they approved. Um, and the medical exemption, like I said, we had only one. What made people really want to get it then is they did not want to wear masks from November 1st to March 31st, because masks were not like now where everybody wears a mask. They just didn't want to do it. So I think that was one of the things that made people go ahead and get the vaccine. Next slide. So in 2015, we made the flu vaccine a condition of hire where um, if you were not willing to get the flu vaccine, um, you would not become part of the fellowship team and we would we would not hire you. They were told about the vaccine during the interview process. Um, but unfortunately, when the COVID pandemic hit, um, we had to start accepting a lot of uh, vaccine, medical and religious exemptions. Um, it was very difficult to not approve a religious exemption because our lawyers, you know, would say, you know, how can you, you know, that's their, if that's their true belief, how are we, we can't go against that. So we had to back off a little bit on the um, last year on the um, mandate of the flu vaccine, but we really only received seven religious exemptions against the uh, flu vaccine. So next slide. We were we were 99.7 percent um, vaccinated, and we went down to 98 percent with those seven um, exemptions. So one of the things that helped um, was our current medical director is very pro-vaccine. He's young and he's fresh. And the old medical director, he he wasn't real pro-vaccine. He didn't like to receive it himself. So it was hard for him to get him to agree to all of this stuff. Um, but the new medical director is all on board. Um, some of the things that other barriers that we came across um, we had to deal with the usual excuses why people didn't want to get the flu vaccine because they really didn't understand it. Um, we always had a handful of staff and we still do that we need to chase after because they won't get it um, during, the, you know, I'll give a certain time. I want you to have your flu vaccine by such and such a time. And then there's always those that you have to chase after. Next slide. So. We did have, when we first um, mandated it, we did have one or two staff that left the facility because they did not want to get it then. They originally got it, but then they decided that they didn't want to get it. 
um, and they left. But there, but those people, there were other reasons also why they left. Um, and any volunteer that does not wish to receive the flu vaccine, um, they will not work. They will not volunteer between November and March. We just don't let them come in the facility to volunteer. Next slide. So what some of the other things that made it beneficial, our president and CEO um, were very progressive and had a they both they had a solid background in healthcare, which I think helped. Their our CEO and our COO are nurses. So they really had the clinical background and that made it a lot easier. Um, we've had a full-time infection preventionist since 2004, which a lot of facilities didn't have, but they did have that here. And we offer no exception, exception rules right from the beginning, which, you know, we're not gonna accept one, give an exep, exemption for one, and not the other. We kind of kept it very across the board even. Um, we developed a friendly vaccine culture, meaning we offered clinics at convenient times for the staff. We gave out candy, stickers. Um, I was very patient with people that were had fears of injection. I would take them off by themselves instead of in a line where people were coming in to get, get their vaccine. I didn't care if people had their favorite nurse on the floor that they wanted to give it to to them. I didn't, that was fine with me. If they wanted to get it at their doctor's office, that was fine. Um, wherever they wanted to get it, just bring documentation in um, that you did receive it. Next slide. Um, the, all the nurses had access to the vaccine. So this helped with the off shift uh, staff to get it. Um, that made it very convenient for them. They didn't have to come in, you know, when their time on their time off. Um, we listened and cleared up any misconceptions people had. It was no cost. Fellowship assumed all the costs of the vaccine. Um, we make made help make the staff understand we were developing a culture of wellness for themselves and our residents. And I already said the last, sorry. Next slide. So the success rates, um, I already told you we were running about 99.7 compliance from the staff over eight years. Um, and the 2021-22 flu season, we had the seven flu exemptions, which we honored. And I don't know about this year, um, we'll probably be giving our flu vaccines second week in October. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if we receive any more um, medical exemptions or uh, religious exemptions. We have had a, a large turnover of staff. So I'm, I'm, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with that. Next slide. So our other successes, we had a decreased influenza outbreaks. And that was a great motivator for staff. Uh, we had healthier residents. We had no deaths related to influenza. And then as probably a lot of facilities, the last three years, I don't think we had any, any positive flu cases um, since COVID started. Next slide. So my advice is just do it. You just have to get, you know, permission from your administration and you know, just you have to start somewhere, get your medical director on board, your administration on board. You know, if they have to talk to the legal uh, department that, you know, you need to do that to make sure you're doing everything um, that's allowed. And that's about it. You know, we, we were very successful. And like I said, it'll be interesting um, with the COVID, you know, our COVID booster rate are very low. Um, I wish more employees would get um, boosted more, but now that the changes in um, the, the up to date, it's the percentage isn't as high as I would like it, but we can just keep um, advertising and, you know, encouraging staff 
I give a flu back. I give COVID vaccines every Wednesday. We ha we're not allowed to keep them here. We have to contract out with another pharmacy to get them. But every Wednesday, um, everybody knows they can sign up on Tuesday, and I'll get them a dose and give them that. Um, I know on uh, September 30th we're having a large vaccine clinic to start giving the bivalent vaccine. Um, I only have maybe five employees that have signed up for that, but I have a lot of residents. So I think most the most of the the clinic will be um, getting the residents up to date uh, with that. So you know, it's just it's a constant keeping up with it, just keep encouraging it, and you know, um, putting out the education. We have um, boards out all over the place that advertise. So it is a little labor intensive, but um, that's all we can do. Thank you. All right, thank you. So in a minute, we'll have our Q&A discussion. So if you have questions for Audrey or Deborah Wright, who is also here, please drop those questions using the chat or the Q&A tool. And while we're waiting, I'd again like to remind everyone that next week we will be discussing the SBAR communication technique and how it can be used in infection control. So that webinar will be Wednesday at 2. We also host office hours live chats every Tuesday at 8 a.m. and every Thursday at 2 p.m. The office hours are kind of like a message board, but they're live. You could drop in your questions and one of our quality improvement specialists will be there to answer your questions. It's just another way you can get in touch with us. You can find those links to those live chats and our webinars and more in the newsletter that we send out each Friday called the Last Minute Lowdown. If you would like to receive that newsletter, but don't think you're on a mailing list, you can email me at ccaudill at qualityinsights.org and I will get you on that list. In a moment, I will drop my email in the chat along with Deborah's in case you'd like to get in contact with them. Let's see, I think I see a question. Okay, Audrey, uh, this uh, commenter says, this is great info. Do you think that your staff might be more receptive to the bivalent vaccine when they receive their flu vaccine? Yes, I know um, that's another thing because I know it's safe to give the both, both of them at the same time. And I've been thinking about maybe offering it at the same time. Um, if we get our, our shipment of the flu vaccines in, it, it, some people might wanna, wanna do that. They might wanna get them at the same time and get it over with. So that, that is something that I've been thinking about. Okay, take another minute. That's the only question we, re we have received so far. Deborah, do you have anything else that you wanted to add before we take off? No, I want to thank you, Audrey, for, for your insight on how you worked through that process many years ago before, you know, the mandate and COVID and, and how you worked with your team to adjust uh, with the exemption process that was put into place for the COVID vaccines. Um, speaking of the bivalent, we do know that that, you know, is out there and pharmacies are starting to get it. We have received lots of questions um, this week in regards to your NHSN reporting and the bivalent and being up to date. And um, I just remind you that NHSN does not change their reporting criteria every time a change occurs with um, the vaccine. So they change their reporting on a quarterly basis. We are upcoming to that quarterly time. So um, I'm sure that there are lots of um, trainings coming out over the next couple of weeks from NHSN. So keep your eye out on that because the uh, reporting requirement will change on November, or November, on September 26th. So if that, that'll be here before we know it. So I'm sure we will, we will have information on that as it gets closer to that time. And um, NHSN also is posting lots of trainings coming up over the next couple of weeks. So if you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to me um, and we can help you work through that in the meantime. So Kathy, I think that's, uh -huh. if we don't have any other questions. 
We have not, so I'll wrap up real quick. And then if there's any last minute, last second questions, we can we can do those before we take off. Okay, so again, I'd like to thank Audrey and Deb for today's presentation. If you would like to see the slides for today's webinar or recording, sorry, if you would like a copy of today's slides or you would like to rewatch a recording, you can contact me at ccaudill at qualityinsights.org and I can send those to you. I will also be posting those on our website later this week at qualityinsights.org slash QIN slash multimedia, and they will be in the last minute lowdown as well. If you'd like to contact Deborah Wright, you can reach her at dwright at qualityinsights.org. That's D-W-R-I-G-H-T at qualityinsights.org. I put both of our emails in the chat if you would like to quickly copy and paste those if you need them. And I would like to thank all of you for joining us. It doesn't look like we have any last second questions coming in. So I think we can sign off. Thank you, Audrey. And thank you, Deborah. Uh, I hope you both have a great day. And I hope that I can see everyone here back again next week. Thank you. Bye.